Our legal expert, Candace Kelly, is here. We'll talk about both cases, Candace, because major news was made in both. Let's start with Andrew Brown. Um, Andrew Brown Jr., why did the judge deny the public release of the body cam footage and outline the whole decision? Because the family will get to see more, yes? Yes, the family will get to see more. Immediately, though, we're talking about his son and next of kin who will be able to see four versions of the video. And then in 30 to 45 days, uh, the judge said that the rest of the family members can actually see the video, but there will be no releasing of the, to the, of the recording to the public because they want to make sure, or the judge wants to make sure, that a potential jury pool is not tainted by making a decision about the recording if it comes out. And it was an interesting process in the courtroom because it wasn't just attorneys on behalf of the Brown family who were fighting. It was various advocacy groups. It was various mm -hmm. media outlets who were saying, listen, we need to receive, see this recording. But the judge denied it, at least for the time being. I think one of the standout comments that was made by the DA was, look, if we go to trial on this, this could potentially taint the jury pool, leaving the door wide open that this may not be even, even go to trial, that charges may not even mm -hmm. be brought against any of yeah. these officers. Yeah. So that was a standout comment. Hey, listen. Hey, listen, Candace, and something you said has my cackles up already. It's that kind of morning, okay? <laughs> if the judge is citing that the jury pool could be tainted here, we got a problem because nobody yeah. was worried about tainting the jury pool when the police, who are part of, the, they all work hand in hand together, as you know, the great legal mind that you are, when they were muddying up Mr. Brown and talking That's about right. him as a felon and a warrant and all of this other stuff. Nobody seemed to care about muddying up the jury pool then. No, we know all about his background. We know all about where potential drugs may be in the house, in his car. We know what their interpretation of everything was for that day. And now they're worried about tainting the jury pool on the other side of the public and his family wanting this recording. And might I add, there being two major differences in the way that the 20 seconds was seen by the attorney for the family and how the police officers are interpreting it. So actually yesterday just led to more cruel and unusual punishment and just confusion, not yeah. just for the family, but for the mm -hmm. public who also wants to see it. Yeah, there, there's a chance, I would imagine, that the public might not get to see this, particularly, as you mentioned, if charges are never filed in this case. So can the judge's decision uh, be appealed? What happens next? Oh, it, it can absolutely be appealed. However, the judge can say once again, no, because really we do have to wait for an investigation, which they're saying on their side, they, they have to wait for an investigation to make sure that everybody has asked all the right questions, to make sure that everybody sees the videos, um, to make, I mean, in terms of the immediate family and the legal people that are involved, that process, for it to get underway, now all of a sudden they are worried. So he's not going to change his mind and it is based upon his yeah. own discretion and he's spoken. Will the video be, if this thing goes further, the main piece of evidence, um, whether or not the deputies will be charged, what about how the warrant was put together? What was represented? Will they go back there? They will go to these warrants because these warrants are a very important part of the process. Whether we're talking about a warrant such as this, which is an arrest warrant, whether we're talking about a no-knock warrant, police officers, judges, people are involved in putting on a piece of paper what they understand the situation to be. And you better believe that these days, hopefully, they are slightly more clear and direct with their evidence as to why the judge should sign the warrant to begin with. So they're trying to make sure that they have a, a case that is really locked, sealed before they even get to the door, before they get to the house. So the warrant is going to be an issue. What was on it? Just like Breonna Taylor, what was on it? Was it right? Was it wrong? Mm -hmm. Should they have been there in the first place? Of course, we saw with Breonna Taylor, it just didn't make a difference. Nobody's been charged with her killing, just a wanton endangerment of people next door. So even though the warrant was wrong, look at the situation that we ended up with. So you better believe, Sharon, like you said, that warrant is going to be looked at and examined. I want to switch gears, talk about Ahmaud Arbery, hate, uh,
crime added to the charges these three defendants face, not just the father and son, but also the neighbor. And I want you to break it down for us and tell us, is it unusual, the timing, all of it? Because Merrick Garland is in charge now, the Justice Department. And I want to know how you see all of this uh, playing out behind the scenes. Absolutely. It is amazing how swiftly the Department of Justice or anybody on the federal level is looking into these cases when it comes to race and when it comes to hate crimes. This is very unusual. On one hand, we have the state charges and those charges are going to stick. But in the meantime, you have this federal hate crime against these three gentlemen that were involved in the killing of Arbery right in the middle of the streets. And I just want to let you know what they are. We are talking about um, one count of interference with Mr. Arbery's right to use public street because of his race. And they were also charged with one count of kidnapping and brandishing a firearm. So you have to understand that these three men used two cars in order to block Ahmad Arbery in. And that's the key. That's where we get this kidnapping charge on the federal level and that they were blocking him. They were taking him, preventing him from going anywhere. And then there's a false imprisonment charge on the state level, because yeah. again, without these cars blocking him in, he might have been able to get away. But when you have a two, 3,000 car blocking you in, you can't go away. And so th that's where we get these kidnapping charges and these false imprisonment charges, which takes it to another level because of the felony involved. But your original question in terms of, hey, this is a particular thing that, ha that doesn't happen a lot. We have got the federal mm -hmm. government involved in this very unusual, especially when we haven't even disposed of the state issues yet. yet. So all of this will be running parallel. It will be interesting to see exactly how this unfolds. Yeah, because, you know, so many of us watching, you know, that footage, that disgusting footage where this black man goes jogging and, and three, I don't know who or what they pledge allegiance to, but they behave like disgusting white supremacists. They really did and, hunting and, you know, him Sharon, down. It, it just, yeah. yeah. And how many times have you been on a walk or been driving before you made a purchase or not and just said, oh, I see that the door is open or all I see is just wood paneling. I'm going to peek in. All the time. All the time. That all is time. not even unusual. Um, it, it's just, <sighs> it's just a shame the way that it happened, but it put a lot of people on notice what they can and cannot do in America. And that list is getting longer mm -hmm. every single day.